G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we continue our series doing individual videos on draft prospects for 2024. If you want to see other players I've done in this series, click in the top right corner, you'll find a list of about 16 or 17 names that I've got done in the series so far. And today we are doing Luke Trainer. Luke Trainer is one that is very hard to put your finger on exactly where he's going to go in this year's draft. But as far as I'm concerned, it's not really a talent issue. This guy has buckets of talent and projects to be a good AFL player. There's just been a, a couple of different factors which has seen him fall from you know potentially a top five to ten prospects sort of midway through this year towards now probably being considered an early second round selection but we'll get into all of that so who is Luke Trainer? Well, he's a 194 centimeter tall defender. I say tall and not key position. That's probably the first limitation, I suppose, on Luke Trainer. He's not a proven key position defender as such. He's more that roaming, intercepting, and offensively minded third tall defender. And while that is still a handy thing to have in your team, a third tall defender, sort of like Jordan Ridley, that he's been compared to, the fact that he's not a true key position, you know, lockdown one on one defender, is probably the first factor in him not necessarily being a top 10 or 15 prospect as it currently stands. He's not bad defensively, uh, but he's only 194 centimeters. So that sort of limits him against defending real 200 centimeter key forwards, which are becoming increasingly common in the modern game. His body strength isn't quite there against other key position defenders. However, he's still pretty sound defensively. And like I said, he can be an offensive threat with his vertical leap for a start. He flies high for marks and his excellent ball use, which helps set up offensive forays out of the back half as well. So he came into this year with a degree of expectation for him being one of the top prospects prospects in this year's draft. He was an under 16 All-Australian and he did that again this year in the under 18s carnival. In those four games for Vic Metro that he played, he averaged 19.8 disposals at 76% disposal efficiency. And I think that is even more impressive when you consider he does take on some more challenging kicks than your average player. 5.8 marks, 1.8 intercept marks per game and 4.8 rebound 50s. So like I said, the caveat is that he's not a true key position player, but he is still quite competitive and defensively sound. There are some mixed opinions as to how dedicated he is to staying on an opponent, but he is an offensive rebounding threat with said intercepting ability and ball use. Like a few other Victorian prospects, he's also had a taste of playing against grown men in the VFL. So against Coburg, he had 20 possessions and four marks and was actually named best of field that day. In terms of athletic testing, well, he missed the draft combine with a hip injury and there has been some suggestion he's been dealing with some concussion. I don't know to what extent that is true. It merely says that he was ruled out of Sandringham's grand final with concussion. But the reason he missed the combine is apparently because of a hip injury, not necessarily that concussion. However, in terms of that athletic testing, he did have a preseason testing day in the Coates Talent League, and he was equal third for his vertical leap, which just backs up what we see when we watch him play. He has a great leap and times those leaps really well to take marks. So to summarize his strengths and weaknesses, well, I said there is that competitiveness. He is a good competitor. He has that ability to read the play, particularly when the ball's in flight, and he's got that leap and that timing to be able to take those intercept marks quite easily. His ball use is excellent as well. Like I said, 76% disposal efficiency. That's pretty good going considering he's not afraid to try that 50 plus meter kick out of defense and hit a running target. He's shown a little bit of versatility this year as well, playing a little bit forward. That being said, at the next level, I do suspect he projects really as that third tall defensive player. But he's got that nice coupling of IQ and the ability to read the play and peel off his opponents to run and take an intercept mark and then set up play with that kick. Naturally, sometimes those kicks don't come off. I think when you're such a talented kick of the footy, it lends him to try more challenging kicks than sometimes he should. But generally speaking, he is a good aggressive kick of the footy and is trusted with the kickouts. As for weaknesses, you probably look towards that defensive ability and that lockdown craft. So like I said, I still think he has good competitiveness and can be a good defensive player when in that role, but he probably doesn't have that lockdown ability, particularly when you're playing against a taller forward who in some cases might be 200 centimeters, but at 194 centimeters, he just gives up a little bit in height and a little bit in body size. I don't think it would be fair to suggest that he is a totally unaccountable defender. I think there is some good defensive craft there, but naturally he has a tendency to peel off and take an intercept mark and he's a little bit more aggressive in that sense, which is different from a true lockdown key defender. So with that being said, that's kind of one of the reasons why he slid down a little bit. He's not a true key position defender, which doesn't mean he's not a worthwhile selection. You just tend to see 
these types in a draft slide down in favor of, you know, pure midfielders or pure key position players. So isolating his draft range is a tricky one. There has been a lot of innuendo about his concussion, although as far as I'm aware, he's all good to go and we'll just treat it as a talent-based selection. So when you're looking at that top 25, which is possibly, you know, his range, the team naturally that has statistically the highest chance of taking him is Richmond. I read Kaltumi's phantom form guide recently. They did link him to Sydney and potentially the Western Bulldogs as well. I think Richmond probably have the greatest need. They're kind of building a future team almost from scratch at this point. So naturally, there is a bit of an obvious need there, I suppose, even if it's not a glaring one. It kind of depends what other tools get taken first as well. But I think we can probably start to expect there's a chance he gets taken from anywhere to 15 onward. Could he push into the late 20s? I suppose that is possible. So there is a fair wide range on Luke Trainer, whereas earlier this year we were talking about it as a potential top five to top 10 prospect. So let me know in the comments what you think of someone like a Luke Trainer. Does your club need a player of his type? Now, I think that will also influence where he gets taken and it might not necessarily just purely be on talent. It will depend which clubs have a bit of an appetite for an intercepting, offensively minded third tall defender. But I'm keen to hear your thoughts on him. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.